So I got you a present. What? While we were in Missouri, <laughs> and I haven't shipped it yet, but I want to show it to you. You're welcome. From the Uranus Fudge Factory, mm. where the best fudge comes from Uranus. So we'll we'll get that we'll get that shipped out to you pretty soon, so you can you can wear it on the air because I know you're probably dying to. I got I got a pink Christmas tree to match my hair. I've got to coordinate. I I don't, I don't think he likes the shirt. Of course he likes the shirt. How could he not like the shirt? We were gonna get you the one that said Uranus Missouri Mortuary. We bury him deep in Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like a light gray, and I feel like you're more of like a black t-shirt kind of guy, so I went with the black. What? I didn't want you. To, I didn't want you. To, yeah, yeah. The, okay, so <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I wasn't here last week because I was in Missouri. Visiting my lovely, wonderful mother-in-law, Missouri, D Dan's mama, and her two wonderful dogs and her one wonderful cat. Dan's mom lives out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, is like it's like I don't I can't even describe it. It's the middle of nowhere, and when you get to the middle of nowhere, Missouri, and you're on the highway, like it, there's nothing. Except every now and then there's a rundown house. And then every now and then there's a big church. And inevitably next to that church is a porn shop. Just saying. So then you get to Uranus, Missouri. And in Uranus, Missouri, there's this little nexus of weirdness. There might be a hell mouth under it. I didn't check. But you have the Uranus Fudge Factory which actually sells surprisingly little candy. It's mostly like a gift shop whatever but it's all ass puns like they just started selling like roasted pecans and walnuts so it said hot roasted nuts new to uranus when you buy stuff when you check out instead of saying have a nice day they say thank you for picking uranus and like the whole place is ass puns but at the register there's a little kiosk where you can donate to like a little religious pregnancy prison where, like, you go to this place, they, they pretend to be a pregnancy clinic that'll counsel you about abortion, but really they talk you into moving into this halfway house and learning about Jesus until you get your baby adopted. And that's right across from the condoms. Then, next door to the Uranus Fudge Factory, there's a bar. And then there's Bill's famous burlesque saloon, yeah. which looks like an Old West saloon and has, like, a six-foot, 60-foot neon burlesque girl and then and then there's the uh axe throwing there's yeah there's an axe throwing area it's the axe hole at uranus yeah the you're just making things. up things i'm not oh. i'm not i put all this on instagram yeah it's all out there all these the, are lies the signs, like the don't litter signs all say please keep uranus clean now this is this isn't at uranus but you should tell him the thing that was just off of the highway before we got to the exit. Well, hang on. Okay. Because right off the property line oh, yeah. of this weird little nexus is a big billboard that says pornography is killing your soul. Like embrace Jesus. Then there's like a tattoo shop. There's like a little area where they have food trucks in the summer with big fake dinosaurs for some reason. And you know, those things that you can put your head through a hole and get a picture and you look like a strong man or whatever. Well, here they have all different animal asses and you put your head in the animal ass. So I got a great picture of Dan with his head coming out of goat's ass, which I think you saw. And uh, yeah, that was, that was an experience. Lots of, and, and in the fudge factory, lots of weird taxidermy. Like there's normal taxidermy, like they got a bobcat and a mountain lion, but then there's like the two headed goat and the mermaid baby yeah so it's like a little like 
Oh, and it's attached to a gun shop. Yeah. There's a big open doorway in the back of the candy sh- candy and gift shop that leads you right into a gun shop, which also has a firing range. <sighs> so you can, like, go get a gun, get some candy, get a tattoo, see some tits. Be told pornography is killing your and soul. And then you leave and you hear about Jesus. And you can donate to the Jesus pregnancy prison while you're there. <laughs> We're just going to pretend from you guys. We're just going to pretend you said none of those things. <laughs> this is this and is well, and, and the it, land of my husband's birth. The the other thing is is we were driving we were driving back to from my mom's house up to St. Louis and just before you get to the exit where you're on to the interstate there's what looks like a big hen house with the front and the back doors <laughs> yeah. blown out. And then spray painted above the door. Hand spray painted. It just in big block letters, so you can see it from the from the highway. It said Skeeter Hole. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I only learned that day that Skeeter means mosquito. Tara asked me, what's a Skeeter Hole? I'm like, I don't know. I can put those two words together, but I don't know what that means. So a little further down the road, we saw like a legit aluminum shack. With a handmade sign that said Barb's Flea Market and Avon. And I was like, this is it. This is the post apocalyptic wasteland. Like, this is, <laughs> this is hillbilly hell. You know what's worse? Every single one of those people can vote. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, um, there was there was a lot of political materials that we just won't get into that uh I don't think Dan's moving me to Missouri anytime soon. I don't think I got no. a gone girl him because I'd be bailing him out of jail once a week. <laughs> and you know what's worse? Alabama's worse. <laughs> it was really scary. <laughs> well then, let's get started. <laughs> so hi everybody. Each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs on all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You, which we just, we don't even need the show tonight. You just kind of did the whole thing in like I had to tell five you about, minutes. If you're ever in Missouri, you got to go to Uranus. You have to experience Uranus in Missouri. It's not to be missed. With both hands. Yeah. Well then, <laughs> we're not they starting. Do have great caramel apples. We're not starting in Missouri tonight. We're starting in Florida. Hey, Tara, do you remember a little while back with the hurricanes and and the emergency? Op- were you here for that one, or was Luke here for that one? But the emergency people and they they came out to give an announcement about hurricane directions. Yeah. Yeah. The sign language person was basically like, yeah. Yeah. Um, guess what? It happened again. It fucking happened again. How? (laughs) You're not seeing (laughs) these people. Fake sign language interpreter delivered gibberish in Florida. Hearing impaired people tuned into a news conference about the arrest of a suspected serial killer and got a message of gibberish from an American Sign Language interpreter. As Tampa Police Chief Brian Dugan announced the arrest of Howell Donaldson uh, Wednesday night, interpreter Darlin Roberts was there beside him, making signs that made no sense. Quote, she sat up there and waved her arms like she was seeing Jingle Bell. Shall we look? Shall we see? Here's the video. Let's watch. Uh, waved her arms like she was singing Jingle Bells. Uh, one of the things what that... What does that mean? Do I you don't... wave your arms when you sing Jingle Bells? I don't know. Among the things Robert signed, according to uh, Satambri... Setabrino, was the following. 51 hours ago, 0 indecipherable. Murder three minutes in 14 weeks old in 10 indecipherable. Murder four five fifty five thousand. Plea, 10 arrest, murder bush, indecipherable, three age, 24. You know what this person's punishment should be? 
they should have to be Donald Trump's ASL interpreter. Because mm-hmm. one, that's terrible punishment. And two, they might actually do a better job than he does. This is, this is, oh God. Tampa Police Department spokesman Steve Hegarty said Monday that Roberts just showed up, told him she was there to provide the sign language interpretation. He assumed someone else at the department called the service. <laughs> Quote, I allowed her to do it. I didn't ask enough questions. You're in charge of public safety. <laughs> and someone just wandered in. It's literally your job to ask enough questions. That is literally your job. Just wandered into the press conference. You can't, you can't do that. You gotta screen these people. This, that is, that is like some like numbers station shit. Yeah, maybe it was coded message. Murder three minutes and 14 weeks ago in old indecipherable murder four or five, 55,000, plea 10 arrest murder bush. Wouldn't that be an amazing way to set out a coded message? <laughs> sign, la- sign language gibberish. Yeah. Like, because obviously <laughs> us stupid hearing people aren't going to notice. So like, if you wanted to start a deaf people uprising, just send in the interpreter to be like, the riot starts at dawn. Like, yes. that should be an X-Files <sighs> episode, honestly. <laughs> Let's move along to something that has been quite, quite vexing for everybody with half a brain. Um, how much do you know about cryptocurrencies, Tara? Um, I know Bitcoin is like bad, but I'm not clear on the specifics. I don't really understand what Bitcoin is. It's like imaginary Super Mario money or something. <laughs> Did you know it now involves cats? I did not. I'm On- intrigued. Online digital collectors investing millions in imaginary cats. Okay. The newest thing in the confusing world of cryptocurrencies, crypto kitties lets you exchange Ethereum for cartoon kittens. Okay, that one isn't any kind of cat. That's a fucking dragon. <laughs> Doesn't even look like a cat. Ethereum is one of the newer cryptocurrencies on the market. Like Bitcoin, it is made up of, it's a made up currency based on something called a blockchain, which is a fancy name for a set of digital records that stay accurate without an official institution keeping them organized. Axiom Zen, the tech company who designed the co- code that controls the crypto kitties, attached tokens to each of the kittens based on this electronic currency and made a game out of it. Released in November, Crypto kitties are pictures of cartoon cats that exist only on the internet and are currently being bought from as low as $20 to well over $50,000. Nico Atsumi's really upgraded since I deleted the app. The user can either have two of their own kittens mate or pay another user to mate with theirs to produce offspring to try to nail down unique characteristics which determine its value. So wait, it's like self-replicating currency? Yes! In addition to the unique unique, unique characteristic each cat is born with, it's also labeled what generation the kitten is. The original Generation Zero was released by Axiom Zen, Older generations tend to be worth more as of now, which eat, and each cat has a cooldown to restrict how fast it can create a new one to help limit inflation. How does this not ensure complete inequality of this asset when literally your money self propagates? Well, no, 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 so no, no, no. Okay, the cats. Literally, the more you have, the more you always will have. The cats themselves aren't the cryptocurrency, okay? They're used... You can buy them with the cryptocurrency and then sell them for more cryptocurrency depending on... It's like, okay. They took Beanie Babies 
and made them ridiculously complicated. And also not real. Not real, yes. Like, you could hold a Beanie Baby. Yes, you could. You could throw a Beanie Baby at somebody. You could. There's a picture on the internet. And Somebody ser- blasts an EMP. These kids, these kitties don't exist anymore. And seriously, if you want pictures of cats on the internet, they're free. They're absolutely free. I post them literally every day. <laughs> I and not even just mine. I work at a shelter. I post pictures of all kinds of cats every day. So you know, people ask me to explain. Bitcoin and Ethereum and all this other shit. And it has this shit going on. And do you know what's even what's what's even crazier? This is one of the only places you could actually spend Ethereum. What's Ethereum? Yeah, what's Ethereum? Ethereum is a different cryptocurrency than Bitcoin. So we have multiple kinds of imaginary money. Yes. Yes. It's like somebody that you buy with real money. Yeah, it's like somebody took the money out of the Monopoly set and then someone else took the money out of the life set. And sold it to you for real money. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure someone else has taken the money out of operation and they have that too. I don't I don't understand I don't get it. I don't either. Is this like what the people that are still in the matrix use for money? <laughs> It's this is the, the, do you know how much one bitcoin is worth this week? It's like $50,000 or something. 17,000 right? for a single bitcoin. Yeah. And I don't I'm still not even clear on what a fucking bitcoin is. It's like <laughs> And that's that's the other thing. You have when you cannot explain the concept of your currency yeah, that's a problem. Without a fucking PowerPoint presentation. Like, I can tell you what a dollar is. I can tell you what a euro is. I can tell you what a fucking franc is. They don't use francs anymore. They're all in the euro. I, but, you know, I. what is a dollar? Well, it's a unit of currency. It is this many. What is a euro? Well, it's a unit of currency equivalent to this many dollars. Like, the fuck is a Bitcoin? How do you determine its value? What is it? Can you hold it? No. If all the servers go down, you just have no money anymore? No, you put it on a USB stick. And if you put that near a magnet? You don't have money anymore. <laughs> I... Also, people can steal your money. Like... My parents were concerned that I was kind of wasting my potential studying art. But there are people that do this. Like, there, somebody invented this. Mm-hmm. And it's their job. Mm-hmm. I don't get that. Nobody does, but people are like, throwing thousands of dollars just, at it. Can I just invent some imaginary bullshit and collect money from people? <laughs> Can I just sell pictures of Peggy and Dottie? And like the pictures of them are as kittens are worth more? And I, I wanna I wanna point out pictures where they're both looking at the camera are the most valuable of all. The o- those are really fucking rare. The only thing you can buy with Bitcoin is stuff on the dark web and very little else. Pretty much people just buy Bitcoin to sell Bitcoin when it gets more valuable. So it's like the internet equivalent of the currency of Mordor? I don't know. No one understands it. No one does. All right. Now for something else. You know what? what's fucked up? This next story makes more sense than Bitcoin. Anything makes more... Fucking Uranus Fudge Factory makes more sense than Bitcoin. <laughs> At least I understand ass puns. Police! DUI suspect dances on car, flees on kid's scooter. <laughs> Reno, Nevada. Police say a Nevada woman was arrested on suspicion of drunken driving after she drove down a highway the wrong way, danced atop her SUV, and attempted to flee from officers 
on a kid's scooter. Okay. Police, police in the city of Sparks answered a Saturday a call Saturday for a wrong way driver found 27 year old Sabra Buley's Jeep Cherokee some 20 yards up a hill off a highway. I mean, your parents named you after hummus. Yeah. It was all going to go wrong. And now 16 people are going to tell me that that word actually means something in a different language. And I'm a dumb white kid and I don't know that. It was a joke. Officer said Buley was acting erratically and dancing on top of the Cherokee before attempting to get away on a kid's scooter. She was arrested. Where did she get the kid's scooter? Did she steal it? I guess. She was arrested on suspicion of possessing a controlled substance. Trafficking MDMA destruction of Crosby. It. <laughs> it was just the arrest. She, she was in some kind of fucking sequence from Sucker Punch. <laughs> she was dressed in black lingerie and slaying a dragon with Selena Gomez. She uh, th- that 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 mugshot that that mugshot practically screams, "I have no idea where the fuck I am." Yeah. That is, I, I, I don't even know who I am at this point. Someone that, is upset that you said Nevada wrong. Nevada? 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 <laughs> now, it's, it's, I, how People is this? A- me on how to say fucking Missouri. They can go to hell. You, no, no, no. How is this a good drug? How is this one of how is this a good drug? It's supposed to be like a great party drug. Well, she yeah. had her own party on the highway. She was having a great time. Nobody else was. No. That's but she not, was having a great time. That's not that's not the definition of a good party. If you're the only person having a good time, that's a bad party. I don't know. I think there are certain kink situations where, but then I guess everybody really is having a good time. Oh. And now this next, okay, speaking of mugshots, the guy in the next mugshot looks exactly like the person who this headline is describing. I swear to God. All right. Let me just, I'm going to read you the headline. Picture in your head what this guy should look like. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Portland strip club patron accused of ranting about anti-white racism before firing gun in the parking lot. All right. There's a lot there. Have a look. Here's the fella. Tell me he did that. That's the dude. I don't know. I was seeing like a, either an, a man bun or white dude dreads. <laughs> <laughs> man in a Portland strip club is accused of firing his gun at least seven times in the parking lot. The Southeast Portland strip club last Wednesday, shortly after witnesses say he ranted about how, quote, that DJ is racist against me because I am white. And threatened to kill a bouncer who the man accused of being a gang member. Daniel Frank, a 31-year-old Newburgh resident, is charged Thursday with two felony counts of unlawful use of a weapon for an encounter at Mystic Gentleman's Club on Wednesday night. He was released shortly later. They let him go? We'll get back to that. Bouncer really isn't a gang? You're probably not going to kill him first. And if you do... Boy, are you going to regret it. We'll circle back to the they let him go. Um, A bouncer told police that Frank was acting weird after entering the club and he had, quote, strange interactions with some of the female entertainers. When Frank went outside, went to a motorcycle, he tried to come back, but the bouncer wanted to check him for weapons again. That's what a witness reported. Frank said, the DJ is racist against me because I am white, yelling at the bouncer, do you want to die, bitch? Are you a gang member? Now, I want to point out that the bouncer was correct to search him for weapons because he actually did have a gun. He wasn't being racist. You went and got a gun. How is that racist? 
He was probably explaining the men's rights movement to the strippers. The affidavit, uh, he yeah, yelling in the background, pulled a gun out, chamber around, began shooting in the air six times. He then ran away and fired once more. The affidavits say cops found him shortly later and he threatened to kill an officer. He was released on Thursday. What is it? What is it? DeRay always says on Twitter, watch whiteness work. <laughs> Cause you don't get away with all that. If you're not a white dude, you just, you just don't. You don't get to just randomly shoot at people. You shot, you shot your gun. Seven and, times. And then you ran away. And then like, you threatened to kill, oh, man. You can't, only a white guy can threaten to kill a cop, yeah. get arrested, and then walk out. And then they the just very, let him go. You have a nice day now, sir. But I really want to, I really want to bring home the sad little self-loathing cowardice that it takes to go get your gun, brandish your gun, fire your gun at the ceiling, and then run away like a toddler. While shooting the gun one more time. Right, like run away like a toddler who's afraid of Santa after you threatened everybody and shot a gun. I just want to bring home how pathetic that is. Do you want Do you want uh, uh, something a little bit more pathetic? Sure. Okay. Okay, let's do more pathetic. Oh... Uh... Woman threatens to kill everybody on this plane. The woman was caught smoking on the plane. Portland, Oregon. A woman was caught smoking on a what flight. What the fuck is with Portland this week? <laughs> woman was caught smoking on a flight from Portland to Sacramento on Saturday, resulting in an in-flight outburst and threats to, quote, kill everyone on this plane when she was escorted to law enforcement upon landing. Uh, pastor told uh, Coin6 News, the person was removed from the plane's bathroom when people learned she was smoking. Witness said the person removed an oxygen mask as she got more uncontrollable. So she's already smoking to the point where she's got the, the oxygen with her. Which is combustible. Yeah. Um, it's not safe. Okay. I smoked for 10 years. Now I use this thing. And you know what I do when I fly? I got the gum. Yeah. I got they don't the... let you bring those on the plane because it has a battery in it. No, no, no. I can bring it on the plane. I can't put it in my luggage, but I can bring it on the plane. Oh, they, they screened us for them. They wouldn't let us carry them. Well, we didn't have them, but they asked us because it has a battery in it. So you could turn it into a bomb. But yeah, I mean, I I can bring it. I can bring this on the plane. I just can't use it on the plane. So I got the gum. When I fly, I've got the gum because I know nobody else wants to breathe smoke. Nobody else really wants to breathe the fucking vapor. I use and the you gum. I want to be a considerate functioning member of society. Right. I don't go into the fucking restroom where every if you've ever flown. I know it, some they tell are, you. During some, the safety thing that no one pays attention to, then that's a fucking crime. Some people out there have never flown. I, I, people watch the show. So here's what they do. When you first get on the plane, they do the in-flight. Here's where the exits are. Here's how your seatbelt works. And they say, don't smoke in the bathroom. There's a smoke detector in there. And disabling the smoke detector is a felony. Yeah. Which is a true. Federal, a federal. federal felony. That's federal pound me in the ass prison. So... To go in there after the, the safety thing while you already are wearing an oxygen mask because you are, you presumably, you have smoked yourself into COPD. Yeah. And after being told, please stop. I mean, at this point, it was at please stop. It's not, we're going to right. arrest you. It's not, you're in trouble. It's, don't do that. So they were already being kind to right. escalate to, I'm going to kill everyone on the plane. This is why I couldn't be a flight attendant because I would be really tempted to be like, 
What's your plan for that? How are you going to do it? I, I just, I want to know. I, I mean, I, <laughs> Is it the slow spreading of lung cancer? And the worst part about this is once people do shit like this, they're still on the plane with you. Yeah. They can't take them away until the plane. So you yeah, are all to go. You're all stuck with this person who's being uh, someone just threatened to kill everyone. And hey, if you are a little bit, a little bit twitchy about flying these days, someone just scream. That's that is a recipe for a panic on an airplane. Also, something only white people get away with. <laughs> <laughs> if you look like you might be like 126th Middle Eastern and you say you're going to kill everybody on the plane, say hello to Gitmo. Yeah. We had some fucking asshole on one of our flights that like, you know, how you're supposed to bring one carry on. Yes. One carry on of a certain size and one personal item. Motherfucker had an, a duffel bag. Way too big to be a carry-on. A backpack stuffed to the fucking limit. And then, like, a laptop bag. And was, like, in everybody's way, trying to arrange his stuff, holding everybody up, getting on the plane. Why did they let him on the plane with all that? I don't know. Like, nobody made you check two of those? So, yeah. Just buy the gum. It's not that expensive. Yeah. Okay. Our... I know it sucks if you're if you're a smoker and you're an addict. Not being able to get that fixed for a while does suck. I'm sure. Like, but <sighs> you got you gotta you gotta figure it out because otherwise you're going to jail. Our final story this week. It, it is already hard enough right now to make videos on YouTube. You're probably watching this on YouTube if you're not watching live. Um, it's already hard enough. What The with, internet is just bending you guys over on the weekly at this point. What with our fellow video producers occasionally deciding to uh, become... Be Nazis. Be Nazis, yeah. Um, and advertisers want nothing to do with that, so... Uh, and YouTube just demonetizing your videos and yeah, it's it's hard out here for for a player. Um, yeah. I promise I'll never say that again. Um, <laughs> I think that should be the title of the video. But uh, it's 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 made a little bit worse when just I I'm kind of ashamed. Oh, I make videos on YouTube. People used to be like, oh wow, that's neat. Now they're like. Oh, you're one of those people. So are you racist or do you hate women or both? Or, or. <laughs> or do you, you torture your children for laughs? Or do you cement a microwave to your head? This fucking yeah. asshole. Dan actually sent me this one and I'm like, I'm pretty sure we got this. Man cements his head in a microwave forcing firefighters to spend an hour trying to free him. Firefighters do not have time for this shit. Five firefighters spent an hour working to release a YouTube prankster. Prankster? This is a prank? And that's the thing. I don't understand who's it to prank on yourself because you almost died. Uh, the 22-year-old and a group of friends. Those are not your friends. Mix no. seven bags of polyfill before they poured it around his head, which was protected by a plastic bag inside the appliance. The well, at least he could breathe. The intention was to use the microwave as a mold, and by the time emergency services arrived, the group had already been trying to free him for 90 minutes. The friends had managed to feed an air tube to the man's head to help him breathe. You didn't think of that first? First! That's, if you add, okay, all right, all right, let's, benefit of the doubt here, you were just trying to make a mold for a gag, okay, okay. First of all, the plastic's gonna fuck that up anyway, so you're not even gonna get a good mold. Didn't, you being a YouTuber, did you not take five minutes to consult YouTube for yeah. videos on how to make a head mold? All of them will show you, like, people with straws coming out of their noses. Mm -hmm. 
or like some, some way to breathe. I'm pretty sure I saw a bit on this on Mr. Wizard when I was 10. What the fuck? I was just, you idiot. Like this is your head. There's nothing you can do without it. Not a goddamn thing can you do without your head. You can't. Without it, you are a corpse. Because you don't have a fucking head. You don't have a brain. You don't have a means to produce, o to intake oxygen. Like, you need it. It's really important. It's not like you got your hand stuck in there. And you can get a prosthetic hand. Can't get no fucking prosthetic head. Five You're gonna die. Five hours. Five firefighters and okay, five firefighters spent an hour. That's five firefighters who could have been doing more important shit. Yeah, I'm sure they had nothing better to do that day than carving your head out of a goddamn microwave. And if I seem especially angry about this one, I kind of am because you know when I say I make videos on internet on the internet. It used to be people would go, oh, do you make porn? I'd be like, no, no, I'm on YouTube. Now they're like, oh, do you make porn? And I'm like, yes, I do. Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I, do. I jerk off onto my little ponies for $39.95 yep, an hour. Exactly That's exactly what, what I, I do. That's what I do. I, I would rather be associated with, with that than with this shit. That has a more positive job connotation. It kind of does. It kind of does. Oh. Which is great. I'm not saying sex work is a bad thing. If you're in charge of it, cool. But yeah. Yeah. I am saying, if you've seen some of the, the crazy weird shit online. You know what, man? If someone's going to pay you to, like, eat a jar of pickles with a stuffed poodle up your ass that more I, power to you for finding that business model i was listening to an episode of this american life this week and i thought of you um oh god <laughs> did you know there's a new whole new segment to the porn industry bespoke porn movies custom made porn films like Zach and Miri make your porno? Yeah. Only some of the shit they talked about was like, one of them was a woman fully clothed sitting in a kiddie pool getting condiments dumped on her. Like relish <laughs> and mayonnaise and... See, I should do that. Okay. I can sit in a kiddie pool and have <laughs> dumped cream corn on me and we could just make bank. Another one was a man collected stamps. He sent his stamps to the porn producers. Didn't want any sexual stuff done. Just wanted three women to destroy his stamp collection. Oh, my God. Well, there is, you know, about fine dom, right? I don't. Financial domination. There's a whole thing where people like what they get off on is people stealing their money. And this is another industry that I should be in because I'm a huge bitch and I will take your money. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you need a find dom, hit me I'm up. I'm saying nothing. Because I'll be an asshole to you and take your money. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's, a, that's like a legit fetish. You shut up. <laughs> that's a legit fetish that they want you to take their money and be mean to them. So... And I'm like, I've found my calling. The first thing we learned this week is that um, YouTube is a tire fire. Yeah. I, I... Please, someone make an alternative, a viable alternative. Please, someone give me somewhere to go. We had blip for a while. We did. Then it's dead. We've learned that Nicorette can keep you out of jail. You idiot. We've learned that no, they're not bigoted against white people. You actually did try to bring a gun into the club. You did. You did that. And then you were an asshole to everybody. We've learned that if you're the only one having fun at the party, it's not a good party. 
unless you're like Regina George, then I imagine that would be cool for you. We've learned that people have imaginary money, spending it on imaginary cats, and they're going to crash our very real economy very soon. I don't, I, I can't, I, I can't. I don't even know. And finally, we've hey, learned- Hey, don't knock over my little tacky tree. Did and you see that? He's trying to kill my tacky tree. I saw that, yes. And finally, we've learned that if someone's holding a press conference in Florida, just go up and start waving your hands around. You'll get paid as an interpreter for the deaf. Just go up and do the fucking hand job. Yeah. Someone and they will give you money. There you go. You got a job. But actually, please don't do that, because then you're endangering the lives of deaf people. Murder who, bush! Who really need information. Yeah. Th th you know, I think the deaf people would like to know where the serial oh, killer yeah. is lurking before they get murdered.